Good morning learners. This is Jyoti Mandral from Management Department and our today's topic is Basic Accounting Principles. Now before starting with the Basic Accounting Principle, first understand what is accounting. So accounting, it is a process of uh, identifying, recording, classifying, summarizing and then uh, analyzing the transaction. So in accounting, the basic process starts with firstly identifying the transactions which are of financial nature and after identifying these transactions, the transactions are recorded in the books of account and after recording then the classifying of the transactions takes place after classifying summarization comes and and after summarization the next one is analyzing and after analyzing the whatever uh, outcomes or results are obtained these results or outcomes are uh, conveyed to the various users now we know what is accounting next will be basic accounting principles so as i have told you that uh, accounting it is a very long process so to complete this process we need some basic guidelines or principles on the basis of which the accounting process can be completed so basically accounting principles are uniform set of rules or guidelines developed to ensure uniformity and easy understanding of the accounting information so now accounting principles are basically classified into two categories. The first one is accounting concepts and the second one is accounting conventions. So now let's see what are accounting concepts. So basically accounting concepts are defined as the assumptions on the basis of which financial statements of the business entity are prepared. So we have three accounting concepts. The first one is going concern concept. The second one is consistency concept and the third one is accrual concept. Now accounting conventions. So accounting conventions are the outcome of accounting practices which have been followed over the years. So the basic difference between accounting concepts and accounting principles is that accounting concepts are mandatory to be followed whereas in case of accounting conventions it depends on the firm whether they want to follow them or not. Now let's start with the accounting concepts. So the first accounting concept that is going concern concept. As per this concept, it is assumed that the business will continue to exist for a long period in the future. The transactions are recorded in the books of the business on the, on the basis of this assumption only. So, for example, we can see that in accounting, the assets are classified into two parts. One is long-term assets and sh short-term assets. Same goes with the liabilities. So, the basic concept, going concern concept is helping us to classify the assets or liabilities into short-term and long-term. It is on the basis of going concern concept only that the people or the outsiders they come into contract with the firm they purchase uh, they provide long-term funds to the firm like they purchase the debentures or they can provide loans so according to this concept whenever a accountant or a firm is starting they have to keep in mind that their business is going to continue for a long period of time so now the next one is that is consistency concept this concept states that accounting principles and methods should remain consistent from one year to another these should not be changed from one year to another these should not be changed from one year to another in order to enable the management to compare the profit and loss account and balance sheet of the different periods. 
so yes this concept it is also very important for a firm because this concept says that whatever technique or method you are adopting you have to continue with that method only like for example there are two methods or there are various methods of calculating depreciation like straight line method diminishing value method so suppose if a firm is adopting straight line method in the first year and in the second year the firm decides to change the method of depreciation and adopts diminishing value method so this is a wrong practice the firm should follow the same method for all the years because if you want to compare your balance sheet or you want to compare the profit or loss of one year with the next year or with the previous year so there should be consistency in your methods or techniques which you have adopted then only you will be able to compare otherwise you won't be able to compare because for comparison we need a similar basis now the next one that is accrual concept accrual concept applies equally to revenue and expenses in accrual concept revenue is recorded when sales are made or services are rendered and it is immaterial whether cash is received or not similarly expenses are recorded in the accounting period in which they assist in earning the revenues whether cash is paid or not so this concept it is also very simple this concept is saying that when you are making sales so at the time of sales or when you are providing services you have to just see that whenever you are doing the sales and whenever you are providing the services at that time only you have to record that transaction in your books of account don't think that cash is received or not it is immaterial same goes with the expenses whenever you are accruing the expenses the same time you have to record them in your books of account don't think that right now we have done the payment or we have not done so it is immaterial if you are accruing the expenses just record them don't see ki cash is paid or not so now we are done with the three basic accounting concepts now the next comes that is accounting conventions so the first accounting convention that is business entity concept according to this concept business is treated as a separate unit and it is considered distinct from its owners creditors managers and others in other words the owner of the business is always considered as distinct and separate from the business he owns so this principle it is also considered as or it is also known as separate legal entity this principle says that the owner of the business is different and the business is different if uh, like for example you have seen that liabilities or you have seen that capital so initially whenever the business is started the at the time or at the time of starting the business the funds which are provided by the owner that is known as capital so we are we are considering the owner as a different person and the firm as a different entity that is the reason we record the capital in the liability side of the balance sheet because it is considered that at the time of starting the entity the owner has provided funds or he has just provided loan to the firm so according to this principle business entity is a uh, business entity is different and the owner is different so whenever you are going to record the transactions in the books of account keep that the owner is different and the firm is different now the next comes that is money measurement concept so according to this concept only those transactions and events are recorded in accounting which are capable of being expressed in terms of money an event even though it may be very important for the business will not be recorded in the books of business unless its effect can be measured in terms of money with a fair degree of accuracy this concept is also very important for a firm as 
at the time of defining accounting i told you that the accounting process starts with identifying the transactions which are of financial nature so accounting says that in the books of accounts only those transactions will be recorded whose value can be measured in terms of money in business there happen so many events which are important for a firm but accounting says that only those transactions will be recorded whose value can be measured in terms of money for example so suppose the sales manager had a fight with the production manager so for accounting this information is immaterial because whatever loss or whatever the damage the quarrel is occurring to the uh, firm cannot be measured in terms of money so accounting says that ignore this data whereas from other point of view we can see that if a quarrel is happening between two managers so it is a big loss for a firm because people they will be uh, indulge in that quarrel and the productivity of the firm will be affected but for accounting this information is immaterial so now the next one that is accounting period concept as the business is intended to continue indefinitely for a long period the true results of the business operations can be ascertained only when the business is completely wound up but ascertainment of profit or loss after a long period will be too late to take corrective actions at that time the users of the financial statements need to know the results of the business at frequent intervals thus the entire life of the firm is divided into time intervals for the measurement of the profits of the business 12 months period is usually adopted for this purpose so yes as this principle is saying that the firm should make a accounting period of 12 months basically this period starts from 1st april and on 31st march every year now the next concept that is dual aspect concept according to this concept every business transaction is recorded as having a dual aspect in other words every transaction affects at least two accounts if one account is debited any other account must be credited the system of recording transactions based on the principle is called as double entry system it is because of this concept that the two sides of the balance sheet are always equal and the accounting equation will always hold good at any point of time so the basic accounting equation that is assets equals to liabilities plus capital or capital equals to assets minus liabilities so dual aspect principle all the transactions which are done in accounting it is based on this principle only that a transaction affects at least two accounts if one account is debited the other account will be credited let's see example like suppose you are purchasing goods so whenever you will purchase goods so it will affect two accounts one is the goods which is known as you have purchased the goods so purchase account your balance of goods will increase whereas if you are purchasing the goods for cash so the cash balance will decrease so here we can see that purchasing goods has affected two accounts one is purchase account with the purchase account it is increasing it will be debited whereas cash account as your cash balance is decreasing it will be credited now the next one that is historical cost or we can say cost concern according to this concept an asset is ordinarily recorded in the books of accounts at the price at which it was acquired this cost becomes the basis of all subsequent accounting for the asset since the acquisition cost relates to the past it is referred to as historical cost so the next principle that is revenue recognition principle revenue means the amount which is added to the capital as a result of business operations revenue is earned by sales of goods 
by providing a service. Concept of revenue recognition determines the time or the particular period in which the revenue is released. Revenue is deemed to be released when the title of the ownership of the goods has been transferred to the purchaser and when he has legally become liable to pay the amount. So this principle, it is just like the accrual principle, but accrual principle, it applies to both the revenue and the expenses whereas revenue recognition principle it is just applying on the sales and it says that whenever we are occurring the sales whenever the goods are sold uh, we have to record the transaction in our books it is immaterial whether cash is received or not so the remaining principles we will continue in our next lecture thank you